Hello guys, MonkeyBot here, and today we're going to be continuing our Thrones of Decay discussion. So we're going to be moving on to the units now. We got a nice little chart in the Shadows of Change 2.0 update, giving us a little insight on what we will be expecting unit-wise for Thrones of Decay. So as you can see on the screen here, we'll be expecting three Legendary Lords, three Legendary Heroes, three regular lords, three regular heroes, 16 units, nine regiments of renown, one magic law and one FLC. This is for all three factions. So if, for example, we're gonna be focusing on Nurgle in this video, I need to divide these numbers by three and that's what we're going to be getting for one faction. So we're gonna, like I said, be talking about Nurgle this video. So let's go straight into the top section, which is the legendary Lord. So the legendary Lord, I think is a given at this point. I've mentioned this so many times in other videos so many other content creators have been talking about it as well but that's going to be Tamakon. Tamakon is just such a given for this DLC it pairs very well with the Empire being Tamakon and Elspeth having that natural rivalry in the Thrones of Chaos books so it's a perfect fit here. If you haven't checked out my Nogal prediction video where I talk about the campaign side of things please feel free to check that out the link is in the top corner there in the video now. Tamakon is going to be great for Nogal it's going to give a nice melee focused character into the Legendary Lord roster and to depending on how CA introduces Tamakon into the game, he could have a variety of different forms. He obviously is going to have his ogre form, I think that's a given, and then he's going to have his mount, which will be the toad dragon. Now, we're going to have to wait and see to see if he's going to be able to take over other forms in the game, but even if it's just going to be the ogre and the toad dragon, I think that's going to be a very good fit for him. So moving on to the next category, we have the legendary hero, and I think the legendary hero, especially if the legendary lord is going to be Tamakon, the legendary hero is going to be Kazakh the Befouled. Kazakh is one of the lieutenants that joins Tamakon on his journey through the mountains of Morn and he joins him quite early on in his quest. Kazakh also rides on top of a Rot Knight. The Rot Knight is basically a really fleshy half demon cavalry unit which is fairly fast for a Nurgle unit and I think it will be a great addition for Nurgle considering Nurgle's lack of speed. I think the hero will be very good at buffing up other cavalry units, maybe some Rot Flies, the actual Chaos Knights, Chaos hounds and things like that making the speed aspect of the Nurgle roster a little bit more powerful. As a little side note I think that the Rot Knights will be a great addition as a mount option for the exalted heroes of Nurgle and the Lord that's also going to be coming for Nurgle which I'll be moving on to next which I think is an obvious one which is just going to be the Chaos Lord of Nurgle. Very similar to Zeech we're just going to get the missing Lord and Hero variants that the other factions already have so the Chaos Lord of Nurgle the non-magical version I think will be an obvious choice. Now they do need to make the Chaos Lord a little bit more interesting to not just turn it into a Demon Prince later on. So I think that this Chaos Lord will also have access to the Toad Dragons as a mount, maybe at level 18, somewhere around there, just to give the player an incentive not to just turn it into a Demon Prince later on. And you can keep it as that Chaos Lord as a mortal, giving you a monstrous, quite powerful mount later on without the magical abilities the Demon Prince gives. It's a little bit of a complaint that I have about the Zinch version of it. There's just no reason to keep it as a Zinch Lord instead of turning it into some sort of Demon Prince later down the track. The same as the magical variants. There's just, there's just no reason to not turn it into a demon prince. TA needs to find some reason not to turn it into a demon prince otherwise all of your armies are just going to end up being the same controlled by either a demon prince or a great unclean one for the Nurgle side of things. It's just going to get a bit repetitive and a bit boring so trying to add that versatility into the game will be nice. I quickly want to point out that the Chaos Lord of Nurgle will obviously be imported into the Warriors of Chaos, giving them a nice Toad Dragon mount as well, making sure that the Warriors of Chaos have a monstrous mount option for a generic Lord, giving them a nice monstrous Lord type other than Coralix Sun Eater. So moving on to the hero, again, I think it's quite an obvious one, and that will be the Chaos Sorcerer hero of Nurgle. They will have access to the Law of Nurgle and the Law of Death. I don't think think they're gonna have access to any other laws of magic I don't see the point of giving Nurgle any more laws of magic I do want to point out that this will also be great for the Warriors of Chaos giving the Warriors of Chaos access to Nurgle magic without putting him in the Lord slot will be great for versatility you can really have a powerful law of magic without putting it into your Lord slot making the Warriors of Chaos just even more versatile than it already is just imagine giving healing to Coalex Sun Eater. It will be devastating. So now we're moving on to the units. So it says we're going to be getting 16 units in total, but let's be honest, 
let's just make it 15 to make it easier. So then we'll be getting five units for each of the races being introduced. So that's five units for Nurgle, five units for the Empire, and then five for the Dwarfs. There are some units which I think are quite obvious, and then there are going to be some units which uh, need a little bit more speculation. So we'll start off with the obvious one, and that will be the Toad Dragon, the same mount option that we'll be getting for the Chaos Lord and Tamakon. And I think it will be a unit to itself as well being the highlight for the Nurgle faction like we have the Vortex Beast for Zinch in the Shadows of Change. I think this will be a great addition for Nurgle. I think it will give a, a nice monstrous unit with a little bit of speed so it will be probably less tanky as the Great Unclean one but it has that speed, it has the damage and it will be a great anti-infantry monstrous unit. I also think it will be nice if it had a little breath attack similar to the dragons but it's not needed, it's not a deal breaker for me but I do think it'll be quite cool. The second unit I think we'll be getting for Nurgle will be the Bile Trolls. Uh, these trolls have been spoken about quite a lot recently. I think the Bile Trolls are going to be the most powerful troll variant that we're going to be getting in all of Warhammer. These are going to essentially be the combination of River Trolls and Stone Trolls mixed into one. They're going to have poison. They're probably going to have a debuffing Aurora around them as well, very similar to the River Trolls. But they'll also be super tanky like the Stone Trolls. Maybe not necessarily with the armor but just that pure hp that they're gonna have they're gonna have like probably like 10,000 hp with regen on top of that and nurgle healing these are going to be some tanky tanky trolls that you are just it's going to be so difficult to get rid of them but these for sure are going to be the most powerful trolls in the game it would be nice if the warriors of chaos could also have access to these so you can mark your trolls now to bile trolls i think to balance it out you'll probably have to get armored trolls first then rank that up to a certain level not just straight away get bile trolls as soon as you get the base level troll but that's something for ca to work out later on now moving on we're going to be getting the most elite units that nurgle has to offer which will be the putrid blyken the putrid blyken are essentially aspiring champions of nurgle they are heavily mutated really tanky really powerful units they will likely have regeneration and they will be equipped with a great weapon giving them nice armor piercing damage so they probably won't have the silver shields like the original aspiring champions do but then the trade-off will be the regen and the armor piercing i really hope they don't become a regiment of renown like the Seathered claw i would rather they become their own unit so we can get that pure elite force that Nurgle need. I don't think we're just going to get a boots on the ground variant. I also think we're going to have them ride on top of rot flies being a separate unit. These will also have the armor piercing trait as the foot variant will but also be given the anti large trait as well. Making them very similar to Griffin Knights from Betonia except slower and much tankier with higher hp now this does leave us with one more unit left for nurgle we've had quite an elite cast so far of units with three high tier units one mid tier unit so I, I feel like we need a low tier chaff unit here just to balance it out a little bit and make nurgle's early game a little bit better so like we got with the zangors for zinch i think the pestigors will be a perfect choice here for nurgle it's a much faster infantry unit which Nurgle desperately needs with their slow forces. The Pestigore will give that nice speed, it will be shielded, it would have poison, it would have a much higher HP pool compared to the rest of the Gore units from the Beastmen roster. It will also be added to the Beastmen like the Zangors were. I think it will be a nice option for an early game unit instead of using just Marauders and Nurglings all of the time. And then that leaves the Regiment of Renown. I'm not going to go too deep into the speculation on what that could be. It's likely going to be one of the Toad Dragons, maybe the Putrid Blyken on the rot flies and I don't know it could literally be any other unit that they're gonna pick it doesn't necessarily have to be from the DLC it could already be in game itself so I'm not gonna dive too deep into what they could do there then it says the law of magic I don't think we're gonna get a new law of magic this DLC it doesn't make sense for Nurgle to have a different law of magic and the Empire already has the eight winds of magic that it has in the army book so moving on to the FLC, it says we got two FLCs for Shutters to Change, but bear in mind that is Catcher and Slay as one of the FLCs. So we will only be getting one FLC unit here, which has been confirmed to be a Legendary Lord. And I do think it's going to be a Nurgle Legendary Lord. And I do think that is going to be Epidemius. Again, I've spoken about Epidemius quite a bit now on the channel. I think he is going to be a very supportive role much about buffing up his armies probably very good with plague bearers and exalted plague bearers really making those units extremely elite and tanky and 
dangerous and then he's also going to be a decent spellcaster on that but not so much of a melee fighter you don't really want to be throwing epidemias into the middle of battle but just keep him behind and just buff up his army around him and that's going to be it for the nurgle units what do you think do you like the selection that i've given are there units that i'm missing that you would prefer to see please feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below but until then guys please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye for now